Good evening, good evening, good evening. Come on in. Man, if you don't have a pen and a piece of paper, you need to get one tonight. You need to have a pen and a piece of paper. You need to have a pen and a piece of paper. You know, I'm telling you, have pen and paper when you come here tonight. Amen. I might have to step on a few toes tonight. I Listen, I, I'm just trying to do what God say do. We get disconnected like we did on last night. I got my desktop ready, read up and going. So uh, I'm going to jump right back on, okay? Y'all need pen and paper. Be very attentive. If you are running around doing stuff, sit down now. Just sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Focus your mind. If your kids don't want to act right, kick them out of the room. I'm trying to tell you. Share it, share it, share it. Please share it with people. I want to thank God for the voices that are rising up during this period of time. That's not telling you what you want to hear, telling you what you need to hear. Grace and peace. We certainly bless God for each of you that are on the bar, on the prayer line on tonight. For those of you that have your Bibles, I am coming out of Habakkuk, the second chapter. I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 5. I'm reading out of the message translation. But before I read that, I want to begin with a statement. This statement was made in September 1964 by Fannie Lou Hamer. And she said, and I quote, You can pray until you faint, but if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. As we read the word of God, it says, I'm reading from the second chapter, I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by my faith. One to four. Sorry about that. One final thing that I need you to know, John 9 and 4, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you on tonight. I thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, and your grace. I thank you for every lesson learned on this day. Every son and every daughter that is under the sound of my voice, Lord, that thought it not robbery to gather together at 815 at nighttime to come here from you. Lord, it has not been pretty. Lord, you have been really taking us to task and I thank you for your love, for those you love, you chasing on yesterday, Lord God, as we all sit and try to wonder how and why am I here in this place, you have met methodically, Lord God, allowed us to see that you're doing something in and through our lives. Yesterday, Lord, I thought that we were going to the place, Lord, where you would convince us that you still have a plan for our lives. Uh, but you made us pause and say, this separation, this disconnect, this reason why we find ourselves apart from the institution that we call church is because some of us need, Lord God, to hear from you and you only. Uh, some of us, Lord God, need to step up, uh, Lord God, in trusting our own Holy Spirit. Uh, some of us need a detox, Lord God, uh, to get the toxicities of uh, customs and uh, way of doing things and, uh, Lord God, practices that may not necessarily line up with your word. Uh, some of us need to get rid of all of that uh, so that we can hear from you clearly uh, about where it is that we are and why 
are we here, God? As we look on tonight, I've been asking the question, Lord God, what is it that you have for your sons and your daughters? I'm feeling, Lord God, your disappointment with us, and it grieves me in my spirit, Lord God, because I understand that we have failed you as the universal church, Lord God. There's so much toxicity, and we're not even concerned about the rest of the world. God, we are concerned about what's going on in the church. Lord God, you got evangelicals pitted against Pentecostals, pitted against Baptists, pitted against, Lord God, seven-day Adventists, pitted against anybody else, Lord God. And we're not finding, Lord God, unity in the body of Christ. God, we can't even read the same word, Lord God, and see your heart in it, Lord God. And we're standing for what it is that we believe, and most of us are wrong in this. And this is why when I look at this minor prophet, God, help us tonight. When we look at him, Lord God, we understand that somehow we deviated from your plan that you had for us somehow. We ventured off course, and one of the things that Habakkuk wanted to understand is, okay, God, but we still belong to you. If we read the first chapter, we understand he wants to know, why would you use somebody who worse off than we are to chasten us? I'll be asking the question, God, why do we allow number 45 in the Republican Party, Lord God, to have us in this vice hold, this grip, Lord God, that is only benefiting them and not us? Why are we finding ourselves, oh God, where the rich get richer and the poor is getting poorer, oh God, why are we here? God, I don't understand it. I realize we're not perfect. I know things are messed up. Hallelujah. And you began to chase in Habakkuk and show him, Lord God, hallelujah, that we have not done what we're supposed to do. We are not worried about them. Hallelujah. So because if we're all right, you do give us the encouraging words by just shall live by faith and know that you're in control. God, I look at this on tonight and ask the question, where are we supposed to be? We are all coming together. Everybody has been praying. We got the same scriptures, Lord God. Second Chronicles 7, 14. We all know them now, Lord God. We got to pray without ceasing. Lord God, let everything that hath breath, we ought to praise you. Lord God, if we are called by your name, we got those scriptures, Lord God, that we're reciting out of our lips, but we're not living it in our heart, Lord God. The humility of our apologies has resonated and then you brought me to Fannie Lou Hamer, Lord God. Reminded me that prayer standing alone is not enough. Hallelujah. Because when we really pray, we get up and do work, God. When we pray, Lord God, we get up and we handle things, God. When we pray, Lord God, we don't sit back and wait for you to do the rest. Lord God, it is not good enough for us to come together and have conversation with you if we're not going to do what you tell us to do. And the Bible is telling us we must work doing your business while it's still day for the night will come when no one is capable of working. And God, this is where most of us find ourselves falling short because after all, all this time in the church, all this time, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday night Bible study, Lord God, every Wednesday prayer service, all this time in the church, many of us still don't know what to do, and that grieves your spirit. How long are we going to be in your presence and hear about you and not know where it is that we're supposed to be in you? What have we been doing all this time? It's equivalent to your murmuring and complaining. Lord God, that vexes your spirit, God. And the Bible is letting us know, hallelujah, that yes, you give us directives. You give us instructions. Sitting down, standing, praying and doing whatever. Standing by itself is not enough. So when I come before you tonight, God, hallelujah, I'm going to ask for your mercy once 
once again. Hallelujah. I'm standing like Abraham now. I'm trying to save Solomon, Gomorrah. Lord God, I'm trying to save Micah. I'm trying to save churches over here, churches over there. Lord God, hallelujah. Lord God, the collective universal church, Lord God. I'm trying to save Republicans and Democrats. I'm trying to save independents, Lord God. I'm trying to save black and white and Hispanic, Lord God. All of us have messed up, Lord God. So if I could just come to you, God, and ask you if I can find somebody that's willing to work, God, would you have mercy on your children? I'm coming to ask you, Lord God, if we believe that you gave us power and authority, Lord God. Lord God, to have things be different. Lord God, would you have mercy on us? Lord, I'm coming to you tonight, Lord God, to ask you, Lord God, if we sit in your face, hallelujah, Lord God, and fast and pray, Lord God, would you tell us what we're supposed to do one more again, God? I know you told us over and over again, Lord God, that we've got to do the work that you have sent us and some still don't know where it is that we're supposed to be. And so we look at Habakkuk, Lord God, and when you responded to him, because you will respond to us, God. When we inquire of you, you let us know that uh, when we read Jeremiah 29 and around the 14th chapter, you said when we come to you, uh, Lord God, that you're not going to make it difficult for us to find you, Lord God. Uh, Lord God, you're looking to be found by us. Uh, uh, it requires a clean heart, a level of sincerity, Lord God, uh, a pureness of heart, Lord God, uh, a real desire, Lord God, to ask, okay, God, I'm a up, Lord God, I didn't hear you. I messed up. I let everybody else tell me uh, what I'm supposed to do, and I'm not really sure how I messed up, God. Uh, but now that I'm here in your face, uh, what is it that I'm supposed to do, God? You tell us, oh God. You told him, I could, uh, write the vision and make it plain. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes we don't understand uh, what it means by that. Uh, each one of us have a task to do uh, that has been ordained uh, by you. The pastor is not going to be able to tell us that. Uh, no preacher, no prophet uh, is going to be able to tell us that. Uh, this is why we're separated from the noise of the church. Uh, hallelujah. Because sometimes the church will make us uh, do things that are actively involved uh, with church stuff, Lord God. Uh, and we miss the bigger picture of our lives and our purpose, uh, Lord God, in you, God. Uh, hallelujah. And our purpose and our assignment uh, goes outside of the four walls of the church. Uh, I'm not saying we're not supposed to serve uh, in the church, Lord God. Uh, I'm saying that our task is bigger than just doing something in the church. So if I'm singing seven days to Sunday and twice on Monday and I'm only doing it in my church, I'm not doing enough. If my only assignment is an usher, I'm not doing enough. My work is beyond the church, God. And some of us have not got that because our commitment has always been to the church. And now we can't serve in the church. So maybe you can let me know, Lord God, what am I to do for you? Lord God, that it goes beyond the four walls of the church. God, where's my work? Where's my field? Where's my vineyard that I'm supposed to labor in? Where I can be effective witnesses? Where I can evangelize? Lord God, where souls will get saved, healed, delivered, and set free? Where's my level of efficiency? Fannie Lou Hamer realized, hallelujah, after I finish praying, what kind of work do I have to do to get legislation passed, Lord God? And what do I have to do? to have things be changed and when she went about her work she put her life on the line God what am I willing to die for for the gospel's sake hallelujah we begin to think about this thing when we look at all of your disciples they died for the gospel's sake some of us are too scared to do work we are, God. Listen, I don't, I don't want no trouble. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no issues. I, I want everybody to like me. I, I, I'm just a little too nervous about going into that neighborhood. Oh, God, I can't go in that bar over there. Oh, Lord God, you want me to go in the crack house? I, I can't do that. I, I, you want me to go in the street? You want me to go in the park? I, you want me to do these things? You want me to feed the homeless? I, God, I can't do none of that. I, don't you see them people over there, God? I, oh, we are too scared to do what it is that you tell us to do, God. Can we be honest with ourselves? But you were clear. You said write the vision and make it plain. Write it on tablets so that everybody understands who I said that you are. 
Hallelujah, God. That right there. I need everybody to understand. Hallelujah. That the work that you have called for us to do defines who it is that we are. That the silliest of people, the biggest of fools, Lord God, will understand. This is who you are, God. That type of work. Hallelujah. When we find out what it is, the world ought to be able to know that when I think about this, I see God serving over there. Hallelujah. When I'm talking about this area of ministry, I see God serving over there. God, when we are doing your work, hallelujah, even a runner, even a passerby, even somebody that just stopped into an industry will know who it is that we are, God. Even the obscure, minuscule places, oh God, I'm thinking even now, Lord God, even if our vocation is secular and that's where we're efficient in our work, people will still know they can come to our office for prayer. They can come to our office for touching an agreement. They can come to our office to be encouraged even if we find ourselves working in a place, hallelujah, where people don't ever call on the name of Jesus because it's not in the church. You are the church in the place, hallelujah, where Christ is not being preached verbally, but your life is supposed to speak the gospel message of salvation and we have failed you, God. (laughs) Father, forgive us. Hallelujah, because now that we're separated for this period of time, maybe we can figure out what it is that you have called for us to do. Maybe we can determine why am I here, God? I can't hear the noise of the church right now. I can't find, figure out, Lord God, what am I supposed to do? All right, I can't bake no cookies on Sunday. I can't handle the usher board uh, 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 next service that's coming up, God. I need to know what am I supposed to do when the church doors are closed? What am I supposed to do? Lord God, if I can't go back there tomorrow, I'm still a Christian. I'm still a representative of you. How can I serve you now, God? Help us tonight. All of the detoxing that needs to take place. All of the mixed messages that have been told to us. That if it's not edifying the body of Christ, that it's not useful Oh, God, uh, uh, we've got these things twisted. We messed it all up. Uh, hallelujah. There are some places that want to keep us so restricted and confined uh, that we can't even evangelize. And all of us have been called to evangelize, to let somebody know, oh, no, I was once blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. I was in darkness, but now uh, I see the light. Hallelujah. I remember being in a horrible pit, but, but God came and he pulled me out. Hallelujah. There is somebody that needs to hear our testimony of where we were to where it is that we are because of you. But if we're so entrenched in the church and church activities, and I have no issues with that, God. But our life cannot be just the church in a building with some people standing alone. You said Christ, you said, I came to do the work of my father who sent me. There is going to be a period of time when I cannot do that any long. When night comes, no man is going to be able to work. And if I'm judged today, God, help us that we understand if I'm judged today, if I'm judged right now for what it is that I've done, oh God, to advance the kingdom, hallelujah, what would that look like? What would that look like, God? I've got to ask myself that question. Have I honored, Lord God, the fact that you've allowed me to live on this earth? Have I done what it is that you've instructed me to do? Have I even attempted, hallelujah, to find out what plan you have for my life? You said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. There is a vision for an appointed time. It speaks of the end and it will not lie. Who we are, hallelujah, cannot be denied by anyone else, even if it takes a while for us to get it. Uh, That lets me know that I don't care if you're 75 years old and listening to me now, uh, you still have a responsibility. It it just took a little while longer and it tarried a little while, but you still have a charge by God. Uh, It shall surely come. It will not delay. Hallelujah. We have to understand uh, That what is going on now is all of us have been proud about the wrong things. 
Some of us take pride in our jobs. Some of us take pride in our children. Some of us take pride in our marriage. Some of us take pride in everything else other than who it is that God has called for us to be. And that's because we don't even know who we're supposed to be in him. And that's when we're off. We're not right. Our spirit is not right. But when you're righteous, you know. When you're righteous, you've taken the time out to figure out, God, why am I here? And God, I'm not saying who is righteous and who is it. But everywhere that I look, you tell us most of us are missing the mark. And all I'm asking you for is your mercy so that those uh, that are not only well-intentioned, but pure-hearted and pure motives, uh, that we ourselves can get it together. That's why I, Lord God, know that you said you're accelerating some things. Hallelujah. Because there are, Lord God, some great area people. There are some individuals that did not know this time has been for them to detox. I understand that now this time has been so that they can seek your face for themselves. This time has allowed them, Lord God, and should be giving them the space that they need, Lord God, to learn the Holy Spirit. I cannot end there tonight. Hallelujah. God, I'm asking, Lord God, that we get comfortable with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That we begin to depend upon the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That we begin to trust the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord God, that we don't quench him, Lord God, as he speaks to us, as he leads us and guide us. Let the Holy Spirit be our guide. Some of us trust what our pastor says more than what the Holy Spirit says. Some of us trust what a preacher or a mother of a church will say than what our Holy Spirit says. I want us to understand that they too have authority. I'm not diminishing that. I'm not taking it away. A good shepherd will allow you to have dialogue when they're giving you an instruction or a directive. And a good shepherd will not allow you to sit on your assignment that you're supposed to be doing for God. A good shepherd will make sure that who it is that you are is fully integrated in the vision of the church and make sure that you fit in. Hallelujah for the advancement if God sent you there. The truth of the matter is, God, as we are dealing with uh, and recognizing the power and the authority uh, and our dependency upon the Holy Spirit, uh, hallelujah, Lord God, some of us might find out that we're sitting under the wrong. Okay, God, uh, we're sitting in the wrong place, oh God, uh, uh, because where it is that we are is not where it is that we're supposed to be. I understand this, God. Uh, some of us grew up in the space or environments. Uh, some of us went to church with our mama and our daddy. Some of us go because our boyfriend went there, so we wanted to go there with him. Uh, some of us, oh God, uh, just found ourselves, oh God, here for a moment, uh, and when the season was over, we were so actively involved, uh, we couldn't possibly believe that our season really might be over, and so some of us are just dying where it is that we are. But if the Holy Spirit uh, is leading us and guiding us, uh, hallelujah, then we will thrive in the place and it will not be a conflict uh, with our shepherd who has our best interest at heart. God, help us tonight so that we realize uh, where it is that we're standing. This is the need for detoxing. I get it. Uh, this is the reason why uh, the separation had to happen. I understand. This is the reason why uh, Many of us had to realize uh, what is my value in you uh, and now we got to go deal with what is my value in the church. If I miss church uh, for four weeks, what's the phone call going to look like? Uh, is the phone call based off of the fact that I'm a faithful tither or they're really concerned about where it is that I am? Uh, God, we have to look at uh, uh, what are we contributing to the church uh, and really how is the church benefiting us? Uh, hallelujah. Do we support one another? God, uh, hallelujah. This is not just one one entity. I'm talking about the universal church. Hallelujah is your church telling you you can't go to that church or that church telling you you don't need to be at this church and what's the justification? Why? And why didn't the Holy Spirit tell me that this was okay or not okay? Because we're listening to voices that are not your voice, God. I pray tonight that we become familiar with your voice, that your voice is magnified in our spirits louder than anybody 
everybody else's voices, uh, even those that are our leadership, uh, that we would trust what you say, uh, Lord God, and win, because it's okay. I thank you for all of those that have been leadership over me and continue to be, uh, Lord God, because good shepherds, uh, good watch cares, Lord God, uh, they make sure that what they say to us, Lord God, uh, is supported by your word, uh, Lord God, that they don't give their opinions uh, that's not rooted and grounded in your word, God. Uh, hallelujah. They take the charge uh, of being in leadership seriously, God. Uh, and I thank you for them. Uh, hallelujah. Because we all need someone, uh, hallelujah, that can chasten us, oh God, when we go off, uh, go astray, Lord oh God. But this thing, I know uh, the reason why uh, we have been pulled back uh, and not able to congregate in the church in this season now uh, is because some of us need to congregate in your presence, God. Uh, we need to come into knowing who you are and how it is you communicate uh, with us, your sons and daughters. Uh, what is the work uh, that you have called for us to do? Where is it that you're taking us? What assignment do we have that will let people know I belong to you, Father? I need to know these things, God, for myself because we know, Lord God, that you're not sending anyone else to do the task you created us to do, and I don't want to disappoint you anymore. I'm standing proxy for your sons and daughters. We now understand that we can pray until we faint. But if we don't get up and try to do something, that whatever it is that you've created for us to do is not going to just fall in our lap. So tonight, Lord God, our charge is, I understand it and I thank you for it. Lord God, through fasting and prayer, and I pray that your sons and daughters, that they would turn down their plates on Friday, Lord God, and just be in your face very specifically. I'm not asking for a long period of time or a heavy prayer, Lord, or a heavy fast, God. But if we can do an absolute fast, Lord God, nothing to eat until 5 p.m. But the time that we have that we normally would be eating, between now and then, we are thinking about, God, what is it you want me to do? What is it you want me to do? What is it you want me to do? That we will bombard you because I want to know why you created me, God. For those that know it, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that we would touch and agree with those that are seriously looking for your face, that seriously want to know where it is that they're supposed to be in you. And that as we, as a collective body, the more of us that begin to recognize where we belong in you, the more laborers are out on the field. Because the Bible does say the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray for the laborers. I'm praying for the laborers so that they can come work in the vineyard. Do what it is that you created all of us to do. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you, Lord God, for the illumination of your word. I thank you, Lord God, uh, uh, because we're trying to get these things right. I know, Lord God, that it is not a popular word, Lord God, uh, um, but there's something to be said about your remnant. And so I thank you for it now. And in all things, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. God, I just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My heart is heavy tonight. And it was yesterday because I don't know about anybody else. I, I feel different when someone is angry with me than I do when someone I love is disappointed in me. It, it, it hits differently. And my heart is heavy because I feel like God is disappointed in us. Well-intentioned as we might be. And I don't want that. So I pray that you heeded the instructions, that you wrote everything down that you were supposed to write down, and that you would commit to fast until 5 p.m. on Friday because you want to know what it is that God has called for you to do in his kingdom. That goes beyond whatever it is that you're doing in your church. This is not a charge for you to stop doing what it is that you're doing in your church. This is, God, what am I supposed to do beyond that? I love you to life. I pray God's very best for you. And I will see you tomorrow night, 8.15 p.m. God bless.